Samayutanikaya, SN, translated by Bhikkhu Sujito. SUT TA Central.net. 017, SN.4.21, SN.4.25. Link Discourses 4. 3 Mara SN.4.21. Several. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying in the land of the Sakyans near Silavati. Now at that time several mendicants were meditating not far from the Buddha, diligent, keen, and resolute. Then Mara the wicked manifested in the form of a Brahmin with a large matted dreadlock, wearing an antelope hide. He was old, bent double, wheezing, and held a staff made of cluster fig tree wood. He went up to those mendicants and said, You've gone forth while young, reverence. You're black-haired, blessed with youth, in the prime of life, and you've never flirted with sensual pleasures. Enjoy human sensual pleasures. Don't give up what is visible in the present to chase after what takes effect over time. Brahmin, that's not what we're doing. We're giving up what takes effect over time to chase after what is visible in the present. For the Buddha says that sensual pleasures take effect over time, they give much suffering and distress, and they are all the more full of drawbacks. But this teaching is visible in this very life, immediately effective, inviting inspection, relevant, so that sensible people can know it for themselves. When they had spoken, Mara the wicked shook his head, waggled his tongue, raised his eyebrows until his brow puckered in three furrows, and departed leaning on his staff. Then those senior mendicants went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side, and told him what had happened. The Buddha said, Mendicants, that was no Brahmin. That was Mara the wicked who came to pull the wool over your eyes. Then, knowing the meaning of this, on that occasion the Buddha recited this verse. When a person has seen where suffering comes from, how could they incline towards sensual pleasures? Realizing that attachment is a tie in the world, a person would train to remove it. SN.4.22 with Samiti. At one time the Buddha was staying in the land of the Sakyans near Silavati. Now at that time Venerable Samiti was meditating not far from the Buddha, diligent, keen, and resolute. Then as Venerable Samiti was in private retreat this thought came to his mind, I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate, to have a teacher who is a perfected one, a fully awakened Buddha. I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate, to have gone forth in a teaching and training so well explained. I'm so fortunate, so very fortunate, to have spiritual companions who are ethical and of good character. And then Mara the wicked, knowing what Samadhi was thinking, went up to him and made a terrifyingly loud noise close by him. It seemed as if the earth was shattering. Then Samadhi went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side, and told him what had happened. The Buddha said, Samadhi, that's not the earth shattering. That's Mara the wicked come to pull the wool over your eyes. Go back to that same place, Samadhi, and meditate, diligent, keen, and resolute. Yes, sir, replied Samadhi. He got up from his seat, bowed, and respectfully circled the Buddha, keeping him on his right, before leaving. And for a second time Samadhi was meditating in that same place, diligent, ardent, and resolute. And for a second time he had the same thought, and Mara made an earth-shattering noise. Then Samadhi addressed Mara the wicked one in verse. I went forth out of faith. From the lay life to homelessness. My mindfulness and wisdom are mature. My mind is serene in immersion. Make whatever illusions you want. It won't bother me. Then Mara the wicked, thinking, the mendicant Samadhi knows me, miserable and sad, vanished right there. SN.4.23 with Godhika. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Rajagaha, in the bamboo grove, the squirrel's feeding ground. Now at that time Venerable Godhika was staying on the slopes of Isajili at the Black Rock. Then Venerable Godhika, meditating diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. 
but then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time God Hika experienced temporary freedom of heart. But for a sixth time he fell away from it. For a seventh time. God Hika, meditating diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. Then he thought, I've fallen away from this temporary freedom of heart no less than six times. Why don't I slit my wrists? And then Mara the wicked, knowing what God Hika was thinking, went up to the Buddha and addressed him in verse. O great hero, O greatly wise! Shining with power and glory! You've gone beyond all threats and perils. I bow to your feet, O seer! Great hero, master of death! Your disciple longs for death. He's planning for it. Stop him, O light bringer. For how, blessed one, can a disciple of yours, one who loves your teaching, a trainee who hasn't achieved their hearts, desire, take his own life, O renowned one. Now at that time Venerable God Hika had already slit his wrists. Then the Buddha, knowing that this was Mara the wicked, addressed him in verse. This is how the wise act. For they don't long for life. Having plucked out craving, root, and all. God Hika is extinguished. Then the Buddha said to the mendicants. Come, mendicants, let's go to the black rock on. The slopes of Isajili where God Hika, who came from a good family, slit his wrists. Yes, sir, they replied. Then the Buddha together with several mendicants went to the black rock on the slopes of Isajili. The Buddha saw God Hika off in the distance lying on his cot, having cast off the aggregates. Now at that time a cloud of black smoke was moving east, west, north, south, above, below, and in between. Then the Buddha said to the mendicants, Mendicants, do you see that cloud of black smoke moving east, west, north, south, above, below, and in between. Yes, sir. That's Mara the wicked searching for God Hika's consciousness, wondering, where is God Hika's consciousness established? But since his consciousness is not established, God Hika is extinguished. Then Mara, carrying his harp of yellow wood apple, went up to the Buddha and addressed him in verse. Above, below, and all around in the four quarters and in between. I've been searching without success. Where has that god Hika got to? He was a wise and steadfast sage. A meditator who loved to practice absorption. By day and by night he applied himself. Without concern for his life. He defeated the army of death. And won't return for any future life. Having plucked out craving root and all. God Hika is extinguished stricken with sorrow, his harp dropping from his armpit. That spirit, downcast, vanished right there. SN.4.24 Seven years of following. So I have heard. At one time the Buddha was staying near Uravela at the goat herd's banyan tree on the bank of the Naranjura River. Now at that time Mara the wicked had been following the Buddha for seven years hoping to find a vulnerability without success. Then Mara the wicked went up to the Buddha and addressed him in verse. Are you overwhelmed by sorrow that you meditate in the forest? Have you lost a fortune, or do you long for one? Or perhaps you've committed some crime in the village. Why don't you get too close to people? And why does no one get close to you? I've dug out the root of sorrow completely. I practice absorption free of guilt or sorrow. I've cut off all greed and hunger for future lives. Undefiled, I practice absorption, O kinsmen of the negligent. The things they call mine. And those who say it's mine. If your mind remains there. You won't escape me, ascetic. The things they speak of aren't mine. I'm not someone who speaks like that. So know this, wicked one. You won't even see the path I take. If you've discovered the path that's safe and leads to the deathless, go and walk that path alone. Why teach it to anyone else? 
Those crossing to the far shore. Ask what's beyond the domain of death. When I'm asked, I explain to them. The truth without attachments. Sir, suppose there was a lotus pond not far. From a town or village, and a crab lived there. Then several boys or girls would leave the town or village and go to the pond, where they'd pull out the crab and put it on dry land. Whenever that crab extended a claw, those boys or girls would snap, crack, and break it off with a stick or a stone. And when that crab's claws had all been snapped, cracked, and broken off it wouldn't be able to return down into that lotus pond. In the same way, sir, the Buddha has snapped, cracked, and broken off all my tricks, dodges, and evasions. Now I'm not able to approach the Buddha again in hopes of finding a vulnerability. Then Mara the wicked recited these verses of disappointment in the Buddha's presence. A crow once circled a stone. That looked like a lump of fat. Perhaps I'll find something tender, it thought. Perhaps there's something tasty. But it didn't find anything tasty. So the crow left that place. Like the crow that pecked the stone. I leave Gotama disappointed. SN.4.25 Mara's Daughters and then Mara the wicked, after reciting these verses of disillusionment in the Buddha's presence, left that place. He sat cross-legged on the ground not far from the Buddha, silent, embarrassed, shoulders drooping, downcast, depressed, with nothing to say, scratching the ground with a stick. Then Mara's daughter's craving, delight, and lust went up to Mara the wicked, and addressed him in verse. Why so downhearted, Dad? What man are you upset about? We'll catch him with the snare of lust. Like an elephant in the wild. We'll tie him up and bring him back. He'll fall under your sway. In this world he is the perfected one, the holy. 1. He's not easily seduced by lust. He has gone beyond Mara's sovereignty. That's why I'm so upset. Then Mara's daughter's craving, delight, and lust went up to the Buddha, and said to him, We serve at your feet, ascetic. But the Buddha ignored them, since he was freed with the supreme ending of attachments. Then craving, delight, and lust withdrew to one side to think up a plan. Men have a diverse spectrum of tastes. Why don't we each manifest in the form of a hundred young maidens? So that's what they did. Then they went up to the Buddha and said to him, We serve at your feet, ascetic. But the Buddha still ignored them, since he was freed with the supreme ending of attachments. Then craving, delight, and lust withdrew to one side to think up a plan. Men have a diverse spectrum of tastes. Why don't we each manifest in the form of a hundred women who have never given birth? So that's what they did. Then they went up to the Buddha and said to him, We serve at your feet, ascetic. But the Buddha still ignored them since he was freed with the supreme ending of attachments. Then craving, delight, and lust, each manifested in the form of a hundred women who have given birth once, women who have given birth twice, middle-aged women, old women. But the Buddha still ignored them, since he was freed with the supreme ending of attachments. Then craving, delight, and lust withdrew to one side and said, What our father said is true. In this world he is the perfected one, the holy one. He's not easily seduced by lust. He has gone beyond Mara's sovereignty. That's why I'm so upset. For if we had come onto any ascetic or Brahmin like this who was not free of lust, his heart would explode, or he'd spew hot blood from his mouth, or he'd go mad and lose his mind. He'd dry up, wither away, and shrivel up like a green reed that was mowed down. Then Mara's daughter's craving, delight, and lust went up to the Buddha, and stood to one side. Mara's daughter craving addressed the Buddha in verse. Are you overwhelmed by sorrow that you meditate in the forest? Have you lost a fortune, or do you long for one? Or perhaps you've committed some crime in the village? Why don't you get too close to people? And why does no one get close to you? I've reached the goal, peace of heart. Having conquered the army of the likable and pleasant, alone, practicing absorption, 
I awaken to bliss. That's why I don't get too close to people, and no one gets too close to me. Then Mara's daughter Delight addressed the Buddha in verse. How does a mendicant who has crossed five floods usually meditate here while crossing the sixth? How do they usually practice absorption so that sensual perceptions are kept out and don't get hold of them? With tranquil body and mind well freed, without making plans, mindful, homeless, understanding the teaching, they practice absorption without placing the mind. They're not shaking or drifting or rigid. That's how a mendicant who has crossed five floods usually meditates here while crossing the sixth. That's how they usually practice absorption so that sensual perceptions are kept out and don't get hold of them. Then Mara's daughter Lust addressed the Buddha in verse, he lives with his community after cutting off craving. And many of the faithful will cross over for sure. Alas, this homeless one will snatch many men away, and lead them past the king of death. The great heroes they lead by means of the true teaching. When the realized ones are leading by the teaching, how could anyone who knows be jealous? Then Mara's daughter's craving, delight, and lust went up to Mara the wicked. Mara the wicked saw them coming off in the distance, and addressed them in verse. Fools! You drill into a mountain. With lotus stalks. You dig up a hill with your nails. You chew iron with your teeth. You seek a footing in the deeps, as it were. While lifting a rock with your head. After attacking a stump with your breast, as it were. You leave Gotama disappointed. They came in their splendor. Craving, delight, and lust. But the teacher brushed them off right there. Like the breeze, a fallen tuft. The link discourses with Mara are complete. And SN 017